Hello everyone and welcome to CL Leadership Live Australia. Joining me today is Christine Burns and Christine is a highly experienced Australian education uh, and technology executive. Last month Christine joined the University of New South Wales as its new Chief Information Officer and she replaced Jeff Pears who has been the university's tech boss since 2020. Welcome Christine to CL Leadership Live Australia. Thank you very much. Nice to see you again. And it's nice to have you here Christine. Now, Christine, you spent more than 10 years in various senior tech roles at the University of Technology, Sydney. You were CEO for seven years up until 2019. And since then, you've been Assistant Vice-Chancellor and Deputy Vice-Chancellor before moving recently back into the CEO role. And that was a, a position that lasted uh, only about eight months. So tell us, why did you decide to move on uh, and accept a new role at UNSW? Yeah, thanks. Well, I, I was very fortunate at UTS to work with some great colleagues and to really lead some um, important changes in technology and the way digital was viewed in the university. Um, I know that many millennials would be horrified to hear that I spent 10 years there. Um, yep. However, universities are large, complex organisations and it does take sustained focus to lead change in an organisation like that. However, there is a point at which it's good for the organisation and it's good for the individual um, mm. to have a, a change, to get some fresh ideas into the organisation and for the individual to get some fresh experiences. So as the 10-year mark loomed, mm. I started to think about what, what I would do next. I was really keen to stay in the sector. I'm really passionate about education at it makes a huge difference in the lives of individuals, in families, in communities, and it's incredibly rewarding to be mm. part of um, that environment and to be working with researchers that are solving really interesting global challenges. Mm. So serendipitously, a role came up as CIO at the University of New South Wales, so the timing was perfect, and um, I was successful in getting that role and moved across and I'm particularly excited about University of New South Wales because it, it does have a technology heritage and it's mm. also very um, passionate about its social justice agenda, which is something else that's important to me. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Ten years is a, is a big stint uh, in this industry. I'm not surprised that the millennials were surprised that you spent ten years there. Um, I spent ten years in my role too, so I think we're, we're pretty much old school, Chrissy. <laughs> yeah, it says something about our age, probably. Ab absolutely. Now, I understand that at UNSW you're going to initially lead cloud migration and student experience projects, and, and you said recently that UNSW is at a critical juncture uh, when it comes to digital technologies. Where is the university's cloud migration program at the moment and what technologies will to be deployed to improve student experience? Yeah, okay. So let me start with the cloud piece. Um, we are not short of brilliant ideas for ways that the university could innovate using technology, but mm -hmm. like lots of big organisations and lots of universities, we have a really complex technology footprint. So mm -hmm. the university recognised that there was a need to transform that digital core yep. um, to enable us to do the sorts of things we want to do in the future. So in approaching the cloud project, and a lot of the hard work on this actually predates me, um, mm -hmm. the university spoke to other, other large complex organisations about what had been successful for them and a key learning was it was quite helpful to take a staged approach. So stage one of our cloud journey, which we're in now, involves moving our workloads from our current data centre um, across to our new cloud environment. So that's with um, obviously decommissioning things that we don't require, but moving them across without major changes to the operating system or the stack. And then once we've moved things across further stages, we'll look at um, how we go about optimising and modernising what's there. Mm -hmm. So the process of migration is up and running and underway and starting to gain some velocity. And that, that's really where we're at at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, as, as well as modernising our digital foundation, we think it will, well, we, we're confident that it will offer um, some good early advantages for our researchers so they'll be able to use our landing zones um, from the start of next year to get access to AWS and Azure services 
mm-hmm. we'll continue to build from there. So that that's on the cloud front. We've also got um, a cybersecurity program running and an integration program running, all part of modernising our digital core. Yeah. So if I jump to students, um, I'm always very quick to say the way I go about working with technology is in partnership with colleagues across the university. I don't feel all the great ideas need to come out of the IT function. We're in a world where IT is part of everybody's job. And in many ways, um, see myself as working in partnership with other colleagues. So um, there are things happening to support the student experience right across the board. So a couple of recent examples. If you think about the phase when a student's considering which university they might go to and what's available, um, quite a lot of complexity there because there's lots of different things, lots of different types of potential student looking for lots of different things. Mm -hmm. Um, So the university recently moved to Adobe Experience Cloud and it's done some interesting things around, um, I guess you'd say, marketing automation and making better information available to students or learners with an interest in the university. When it comes to administrative systems, one of the key areas of focus is on how can we get information to students as, as easily and readily as possible. Oh. And um, so there's, there's a, quite a bit of work underway at the moment around that. And then a, a final element of the student experience is around the teaching and learning. So uh, a big piece of work underway at the moment looking at how do we streamline and integrate, I guess, what you call our, our digital learning ecosystem. Yeah, cool. It sounds like there's a lot of interesting projects going on there, um, as, as there are across a, a lot of university, a lot of tertiary institutions these days. So education is really at the forefront of innovation, that's for sure. Uh, what about COVID? What impact has that had on education? Is it, was it, has it been a difficult period over the past two and a half years? I yeah, mean, yeah. So I, to... I would say, look, it's been a difficult period for everyone, hasn't it, in different mm-hmm. ways? And certainly the uncertainty and the change impacted higher education as much as any other sector, that people will be aware that uh, one particular challenge in higher education was that international students were prevented yep. from returning to Australia and yep. um, at our university and, and all universities, in fact, the technology function did amazing things to enable both the moves to remote teaching and learning and supporting students who were overseas. Yeah. Um, what I think is more exciting Exciting is it, it, the, the COVID experience also had some really positive outcomes. And the first was that it made people aware of what you might call the affordances of technology, what the possibilities are. Yeah. And it also drove a really significant uptick in digital capability. So coming out the other side of that, um, it's a really interesting point to be in a university because there's, there's been almost like lots of experiments and pilots of different ways of leveraging technology in learning and teaching and in research and in the ways that we work. Yeah. Um, so it's an interesting point to evaluate those and work out which ones we want to scale up or change to take into the future and, and that sort of... Um, compressed innovation it might not be the way you chose to do it but the 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 learnings are quite exciting um last week I went down to visit some of our academics in physics to look at some things they were doing with hybrid teaching um really innovative ways of engaging groups um in in a hybrid learning environment so uh, I think difficult period but um you know, it's silver lining is really everyone very excited about the possibilities of digital um, mm. and no shortage of um, work for the IT team to be partnering with our colleagues across the university on and, for again, sure. in common with colleagues in other sectors, the, the challenge of finding people yeah. to get things done is, is a very real one at the moment. So, were there any? Have there been any key lessons you learned? I guess uh, since the pandemic, uh, but in your career in general, um, that you will bring into this 
that you will bring into this new role? Is there anything that, you, that, that you're going to apply in this new role that you've learned in the past? Yeah, uh, de definitely. I'm always yeah. learning. I think that's an important thing. In fact, working in higher education, that's, that's one of the really good lessons. It, it is always important to keep learning. There's always more to learn. Yeah. Um, so I've already off to a um, start on that front. I've been through a massive cycle of listening to people across the university. So I think in my first month I'd had 65 meetings across the university understanding yeah. what mattered to people, what they were looking for from technology. Yeah. I've, I've also been fortunate to work in the past with academics who have some expertise around human-centred design. And so one of the other big lessons for me has been, uh, it sounds obvious, but keeping the people or the users of the system at the centre of everything that you do. So yeah. um, part of going out to speak with people across the university stems from a, a, a real fresh appreciation of the fact that that really matters. Yeah. And the, the final one, not, not a new lesson, but an important um a commitment I've had right through my career, I guess, is one of the top things for me in being a leader has been um, the opportunity that you have to create an environment where people thrive, where their careers develop, um, the whole person comes to work and the whole person goes home. And one of the things that, that COVID experience brought home to all of us was the people in our teams are everything. Mm. So, again, I've... Um, I really enjoy meeting with people. At the moment, I'm getting to know my team as quickly as I can. I've yep. been sitting in different parts of the team every couple of weeks and I have had some feedback which I've listened to, which is that that's a mixed blessing for the team because okay. I am quite keen to chat to everybody and um, that's not always what everybody wants in the background as they're doing their work. So oh, I can imagine. Is what how, is the team bigger than the one that you had at at, uh, uh, at UTS? A little, a little, a little, a little bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. and, a, and a great. I'm really excited. A great team, and one of the things I'm particularly excited about is a real mix of women right across the team. So in the very mm. technical roles as well as often, I've worked in teams where the women are more in the business analysis or project mm. management areas, but this, mm. this, there's been a commitment to supporting diversity generally, yeah. um, which matters. And um, one of the ways that's seen is a really good spread of women across the team, which is great. Yeah, it's good to see women in more technical roles too, as you said. Yeah. As you said, for sure. Now, the future of tertiary education, I mean, do you feel that students in the coming years uh, will rarely visit a campus. And if that's the case, what role uh, will technology play? Or will technological innovation simply augment the student experience as, as students, I guess, spend more time just alternating between the campus and other sites? What's your feeling uh, for the future in terms yeah. of how so, students are going to operate? I'll, I mean, I will answer, give you my personal opinion. At, um, mm. Six weeks into the new role, unable to yep. speak on behalf of the university, but what I've seen happening across the sector um, makes me think all those things will happen. So as we move into the future, there will be fewer and fewer people like myself and yourself who spend 10 years in a job. Yeah. We will see people moving into um, different career paths and needing to learn more rapidly as they go along. And at different stages of career and life, um, they'll be looking for different things out of tertiary education. So I think it's highly likely that, for example, many students straight from school will continue to want an on-campus experience and um, technology will augment that. Yeah. But similarly, at, at different phases of um, someone's life, it may be that an online, an online learning experience is what will be helpful. And in some ways, I'm the case in point there. So I think in 2019, probably. Mm. I completed, again, not a full degree, a graduate certificate in yep. change management because that's something I wanted to deepen my skills in. Yep. Um, and I might add it was a fantastic course at University of New South Wales AGSM. So I, I think we'll see that full range, which makes it an exciting industry to watch because there oh, are sure. lots of things possible. 
um, mm. and potentially lots of new business models possible through the technology as well. Yeah, for sure. All right, Christine, thank you very much. It's been great talking to you. It's been a little while since we've spoke and it's great to see that you're enjoying the new roles uh, a few weeks in and uh, all the best of luck for the coming months. Uh, I mean, clearly there are lots of challenges there, but uh, education is very exciting and I think that we're seeing big changes, particularly since COVID. Um, you know, I, I, there's a, young people have different ideas about what work is and, and what education is and it's, it's very different to what uh, yeah. we experienced, you I and think I. The, the expectations yeah. have really shifted and yeah. the what's possible um, has broadened enormously. It's pretty exciting times. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Christine. Okay, we'll talk thank to you, again you soon. very much. Okay, see you. Bye. Bye.